But yeah, Billy Billy getting taken down is is surprising. Like when when I looked at this game as a whole, like after beating it and stuff, and going back and dissecting it, I was like, wow, that's surprising. That kind of Billy, the guy who they paint to be like the dude, the hero, like the one you know, the the one who has a backstory, the one who has you know everything that they put all the they give all the the meaty stuff to in the script. I was like, oh wow, they they actually made him the one who gets knocked out and separated, and you actually do have to play as Rebecca for a while. Um, and I like that they did that. I, I really like that they did that. Um, what gun is this? Oh, yes, the Magnum. Uh, but you know, the but that's like. I was hoping that during this time as Rebecca, you get to learn more about Rebecca, because it's like, all right, the the guy's out of the way, the distraction is out of the way. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, you know what I mean. Billy is the one they kind of focus on and kind of push to the forefront at times in the game. So without him, I'm like, oh, this is a good time to get to know Rebecca now. So we're into the next act of the storyline. This should, you know, should be great. And we do, we run into Enrico, and 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 she deals with like a tyrant and stuff. It's, it's it's neat the things she goes through but again it doesn't it doesn't peel back any layers on her as a character and i think that just goes to show that you know the just what we've read in interviews where the people who made this game just weren't a big fan of hers for whatever reason and that's uh, a bummer because like like a lot of characters that have just like an iota of uh of a backstory i feel like there's potential there to tap into that backstory and they don't really go into it that much because this is the part where she should be running into other stars members like not just Enrico but anyone else um, maybe they should have kept Edward alive they just made him like a zombie in the beginning maybe they should have kept him alive so that he could uh, interact with Rebecca through the story and I think in one of the early drafts he was like they did keep him alive um, all right bullets bullets this is a room uh, this hatch actually is is I don't know if it's the exact one from Resident Evil 2, but this room is a room you enter in Resident Evil 2. Um, again, not sure if it's the exact room, but it's very similar. And when you go down into the labs down below, you're pretty much in the exact labs from Resident Evil 2. Uh, although, I, I mean, it's hard to say, because again, continuity, it's every time that Capcom has ever tried to go back and tell a story or cram a story in, like, if you look at Resident Evil 1, 2, and Code Veronica, it makes sense. It, it's a it's a nice trilogy. You squeeze in Nemesis, and as fun as that game is, the story and continuity of it, it's rushed and kind of sloppy at times. Same with this one. Uh, if this is the lab from Resident Evil 2, there should be Umbrella employees working here. Uh, as far as we know from Resident Evil 2, there were people still working in the lab down below with William Birkin. Uh, Annette was still down there. Power was still operational. Um, sure, things looked this, you know, dilapidated, uh, but but I feel like it looks even, maybe it's because it's the new graphics, it looks even more dilapidated and looks more abandoned than it should look. Um, so it's Kevin Seek, Bezo, Cherry, but I don't host as many people as you. Oh, uh, well, I, dude, I appreciate it. Uh, I got to check out more of Bezo's stuff uh, and Cherry. Um, definitely. A giant humanoid being is suspended in bioorganic fluid inside a capsule. Ooh. And then, like, the foreshadowing. It's like, oh, look, here's foreshadowing. But it foreshadows something that happens in, like, you know, five minutes. And it's like, okay. It's like, I need a... Uh, good storytelling is a, a little bit more foreshadowing than that sometimes. <laughs> hey, Jamily, what's up? How are you? Welcome to the stream. A wandering chicken. Joke's on you, Grifter. I got super brave. You just weren't there for it. Uh, don't go check the broadcast, she says. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, John, I was just telling him I, I didn't want to jump into your stream while well, I was updating Kickstarter stuff and finishing a few things posting to YouTube. And then I was like, ah, maybe I'll peek in for a second. But then when I came back to Twitch, it wasn't uh, it wasn't hosting you and it wasn't like showing you on my list. I had a sc I scrolled down and saw that you were still there, uh, but it was hosting a guy named Spikey. So my host thing it randomizes, so it'll host someone and then like jump to someone else and you know so uh, so I was like oh she's not on. I was like well that's okay. She told me not to watch her you know her stream anyway because she's doing layers of fear. Um, so I was like all right I guess I'll just start mine up and. Uh, Looks like you were you were just wrapping up your stream, so perfect timing. 
And Layers of Fear, I mean, if, if you guys are, you guys want me to, I, I own it. We can always play it, um, you know, like uh, later this week or next week. Uh, probably not later this week. We're probably going to get all my streaming done if we do any streaming this week. Probably like tonight, obviously with this. Um, and, uh, and probably tomorrow. So again, this all looks like, basically looks like the place from Resident Evil 2. Um, I don't know if it's another platform, like on the other side of the yard that lowers down, you know, that's opposite. Because the other one's close to the police department um, with with a few minor, you know. Go so it's at this point, you're like, all right, we were in the woods, and then we took a train. Like, the geography doesn't make sense. Um, you're like, okay, we were in the woods, and then we took a train, I guess, all the way back to town almost. Because this place was near the police department and Resident Evil 2. Um, so you're kind of like, oh, wow. So Rebecca could literally go to the, to the police department and tell the, the alpha team, <laughs> like, hey, I'm alive. Um, like, they're literally that close to it. So it, I don't know. I just get, I, I these are little nitpicky things, sure, but also, like, things that I can't help but think about. Uh, I just can't shut my, as a, as a person who's obsessed with, continuity and, and, st and storytelling like I, it's just those things that I just can't get my head around I can't just go ah all right some things I can some things I can't that's one of those things where I don't think I can and this that's the room where Ada like you if she's wounded you bring her in or if you're playing as Claire you bring Sherry Birkin in there and then yeah here's a moment where it's like great all right we have no Billy for a while we're gonna get a team up here and we don't it's it it's like over in a second. Don't shoot. And then even if Rebecca doesn't get to the police department, how come Enrico, with all the Are you okay, investigating Rebecca? he's doing down here, he doesn't he doesn't run into um, you seen them? any other like That's bad guys. He doesn't run into any um, umbrella employees. We should arrive at the um, mansion, which umbrella uses for research. Come on, let's. He go. knows that the umbrella mansion. Wait isn't far away but he doesn't know that the police department is the other way like it's it's just all these things that no point worrying about them yeah i don't know come on let's go sir please and again i know some someone called me out once they were like hey you know these things aren't supposed to be works of art in the sense of storytelling they're not supposed to like win any awards and i'm like no but they do have to tell a basic story well and this is not telling a basic story well my biggest pet peeve of this game you want to check out Cherry? There's going to be a 12-hour stream tomorrow from like 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. your time. Oh, all right, sweet. Then I will. I will definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, exactly. When you play it blind, I'm there for you and with you. All right, thanks, John. It's intense so far, but I'm really liking it. Gotta know my limits with the audio and visuals. Grifter uh, got to hear me lose it. Uh, just kidding. I'm super brave, uh, always. And also, what are you drinking? Oh, John Lee, I'm drinking Pepsi. Drink it, Pepsi. Good victory, Jomley. Now I'm all salty. How does Twitch not have a chicken emoji? That's a good Twitch fail indeed. It's a good question. All right. But enough about what irks me about this game, because, you know, obviously I've done that before on this channel, and, uh, I, and I'll do it again. <laughs> so today it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, let's just, let's just chit-chat. Ooh. Hey, remember that thing we foreshadowed like four minutes ago? It's here. What is that? With no explanation on how it got out and and totally spoiling uh, like any look of surprise Rebecca would have on her face in Resident Evil Remake. I think that's why in the remake they had the scene where Wesker knocks her out um, before he awakens a tyrant, so it's so it doesn't feel redundant of her going like, "What is that thing?" Because it's like, well, you know what it is, kind of. You fought one already. Merry Christmas, people. Grifter says, "Amen to that." So yeah, I did manage to squeeze in um, two of the three videos I made on Saturday, which was the Venom Merry Christmas episode and the end of the year 2017 plans for 2018 video. Those are both posted on my YouTube channel. Um, Oh. All right. That Magnum is super powerful. <laughs> I thought I was going to at least have to shoot him like six or seven times. Um, all right. 
I'll take it. Speed run? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, John Lee says. Merry Christmas. Um, and then I got these six episodes that we played last night. I was able to get all those in as well. So I'm caught up at this point. I still got to get some Destiny videos edited and some other things edited, but, um, you know, all in good time. I got a lot done today from bed, which is nice. Um, it was it was nice sleeping in and to actually sleep felt good. I slept for five hours, so I didn't sleep for long, but five hours is better than like the two hours I've, I've been getting. Um, and again, this is what I mean by like the geography. I got to go back on this because it's just it's it's such an annoying thing here. So this is where the train crashed at the beginning of the game. And so the facility is just right there. Um, right through those doors down below and uh, and apparently right underneath us is the so that tram ride from the um, underneath the church over to this facility almost feels useless it's it's not a very long tram ride uh, <laughs> and it, it there's a lot of conveniences like they're just like oh like the level design is very conveniently designed for stupid things like uh oh we gotta how come she she's got to get to this place and she's got to get here and it's like yeah i know raccoon city is a small midwestern town apparently so you can excuse it as that but still gets a little annoying oh Door unlocked. If we were really speed running this though, we wouldn't have gone up to floors one and two. I just wanted to show them off too, so I could have an excuse to be salty. <laughs> Uh, making chicken and dumplings tonight. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Ho, ho, ho. You and your friends no longer Grifter gifted. Oh, what? Good Dude, Grifter, now thank you. Will stop Grifter just my paid four ninety nine for Jomley to be subscribed to this channel for Christmas. Dude, that is super nice of you. You didn't have to do that. I know Jom Jom loves me. She 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 sent me some really good, that. The two gifts, really great gifts for Christmas. Um, thank you, both of you. I truly and really mean that. Thank you. That is super nice. I'm glad I got that notification too, because you know sometimes uh, with my, you know, without me having like OBS and things, like I miss stuff like that. So I'm glad I was able to see it. Twitch is getting better about notifying it and and making it clear, like that that's highlighted for me, so I can see it like clear as day. So that's nice. Um, and I know that both uh, both Twitch and YouTube have their issues, but man, am I glad both platforms exist so that I could connect with people like this. Like, seriously. Um, I see people all the time making videos about like how much they hate YouTube and YouTube's affecting their livelihood and, and fec affecting their lives and taking their money away. And although I, I agree, it's like, hey, if you're making this amount of money and then something happens, you know, you have the right to be mad about it. I totally agree, but at the end of the day, I'm still glad they're here. <laughs> like I'm still still glad Twitch and YouTube are here, so I could I could have my little corner of both platforms and and meet really great people like you guys. So thank you. Um, Grifter is Bay. He's for sure is Bay. Uh, I think I screwed up. Yeah. I think it's a. Uh... Is it this? No, it's. I gotta go down one more. I think it's this one. No, this one. No, it is that one. Huh. It's been so long since I've done this, I, I forget. 
Yeah, okay. Is this gonna work? Nope. So I was one away, okay. YouTube and Twitch both have their pluses and minuses. I love them both. Oh, yeah, same same here. Same here, Grifter. Um, all right, so first, let's do this one. And then I think... Oop. This one? Yep. And then... I guess we can go this one. Yeah! All right! That didn't take long. Uh, but no, I'm 100% with you, Griff. 100%. And that's the thing is, th most things do have pluses and minuses, and, and it's just about, it's about dealing with that. Um, you know, when if something's too good, it, then I start to wonder. If things are too horrible, I also, I'm already worried, probably, and, <laughs> and wonder. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm very much the past like year, year and a half, like trying to get back to find, like, you know, finding the balance of things and you got to take the good with the bad sometimes and the bad with the good sometimes it's just how it is. Um, no command for follow, huh? I love that. I love when they're still walking, like, with no head. It's just... Because the sound, you're just like, ugh. Um, I actually got some nice comments today. Oh, shoot. No, oh, it's gonna explode. <laughs> oh, man. Um... I actually got some nice comments today on some of my YouTube videos that I posted, like the the Venom ones. Like someone, someone actually wrote me from the Netherlands, which is super dope. He was like, "Hey man, I, I came across your channel a couple days ago, and I've just been watching all your Venom stuff." And he's like, "I love these videos. Keep them coming." Uh, and by the way, you have a friend in the Netherlands. Netherlands now. I was like, "What?" I was like, "And again, like, it's like, yeah, you could you can complain about things at the end of the day, uh, though." that wouldn't have been a possible without something like YouTube. So that was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, sometimes my fingers forget which stream I'm in and they just do their thing. <laughs> oh, I'm very familiar with muscle memory, so I know how you feel. All right, so I think we just, we don't go, like in this room here, I think we just run through it because we need Billy to finish the puzzle in here. Um, I think, right? Or we can do it with Rebecca, but it's just it takes a while, I think. Oh no, I think you can't. I think you can't do it with Rebecca, because she's a girl. Like I think, didn't we try that one time on one of our playthroughs? I, I could be totally wrong here, but I think we tried to have her go down and push the crates, and she couldn't. Like she physically couldn't push the crates. Um, I think she said something like, "Oh, there's something in this," and she couldn't push it. So yeah, I'll just wait for Billy. It's fine. I'm all for teamwork too. I'm I'm all for that. I wasn't trying to be SJW there, where it's like she can't push it because she's a girl. I know the game wasn't exactly saying that. It was more like, hey, we put heavy boxes down there. <laughs> like, it's it's gonna prevent water, you know, from uh, filling up or something. So they got to be heavy. Where am I? You're safe now. Uh, crates are heavy, man. Oh, I try. Shit, I know. I'm not saying I could push them. <laughs> uh, I definitely couldn't. I'm saying Rebecca has a better shot at pushing them than I do, though. LOL, a girl, <laughs> John Lee says. Pushing my crates? <laughs> John. Must have been used as I don't mean to laugh over this research. this scene with dead bodies, so I apologize. It's very inconsiderate. With the mother virus. So here's where Billy's story could have been really interesting. You see him have these like flashbacks of the, the the situation he was in where he was in Africa and people died. They should have tied Billy into the progenitor virus. Billy should have been a little bit older and maybe um, part of Umbrella. 
and maybe he was down there when they were when they when they went back with tricell and stuff you know or or before tricell when they were going and pulling samples from the 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 flower the 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 whatever it was the dandelion or daisy or whatever that was underground that didn't need sunlight to grow and uh he should have been part of some like military group that they're like, all right, we hired mercenaries to help us. And then Billy found out they were doing some shady stuff and they were hurting like local villagers and stuff. And maybe he stood up against them. That's interesting because you can give him the same exact story you gave him backstory wise, but tie it into the actual lore of the game. I mean, he was already in Africa. It's like, just add like 10 years to his age and then, you know, um, and then tie him in like that. That just to me, to me makes okay. the most sense. Um, so that's where I kind of wish they did that. And then he could have said, like, oh, they were still operating on the mother virus. You could have had it to where Billy reveals at that moment. I actually used to work for Umbrella. And Umbrella, I, what, I saw them um, working on this stuff. And and that's why I'm here is because they know I know too much. And so they, uh, they, they're, you know, they're going to use me as their latest test subject or something. Um, they're going to put me in the nemesis program or whatever, you know, um, you could, you could have tied him in, in so many different ways and it would have been, it would have worked on so many levels. So she can push the crates. I think, I think she just can't push this one. Uh, so there's one like steel crate. Yeah. That one there. And I think that's the one Rebecca cannot push. So yeah. Come on game. You got this. Yes. All right. We did it. <laughs> okay we did it well we did two of the crates <laughs> that's always the one I screw up on is the freaking middle one though I'd be lost here I have no idea what you're trying to accomplish yeah so the thing is I haven't so here's the wide shot this is what you're when you're supposed to fix. when you come into the room you see down in the bottom left there's something shiny in the corner and you're like, okay, so you know you have to get over there somehow. And so when, you, when you're down here in this position, you kind of get the wide shot. There's a crack in the pavement up there, so there's no crosswalk. So the goal is to um, fill this room with water. And these brown crates, which are not weighted down, they're empty, they will float. And you can walk across them, create a bridge. Um, It's kind of a silly puzzle thing, really, because there's no real way for someone to set it up. So this is trying to seem like it's a like a it happened naturally, and you're kind of like uh, no, though. Um, but yeah, if you. If you don't see it from the various angles, it is hard to decipher what exactly you're supposed to do. All right, so now we can leave. Uh, I see, so, yeah, there you go. So see there, right there, you can see the, the wheel and that's when it's like, all right, that's, we gotta get to that thing. And now we can fill it up with water now that Billy's out of there safely and we got the crates where we need them to be. Oh, move Billy. So again, this isn't exactly a puzzle because like who would, who would even make the time to be like, oh, we have to make sure this crank doesn't get used by someone. So let's move these crates and empty and drain the water. And someone would have to fill like no one would do that. <laughs> it had to be accidental, which is why I kind of wish there was maybe, um, like someone over there, like a body, um, you know, like maybe they, they try to get out of the room and, you know, or something, or I don't know, I guess you don't really need that either. <laughs> Um, for all we know, it could have been someone when the emergency things went off saying like, Hey, there's an infection. Uh, okay. they, they probably were like, Oh, I need to, um, I need to run. <laughs> and they ran and dropped the thing back there is most likely what happened. Um, 
or because, I don't even know why someone would toss it over there. Again, I don't know. It's just one of those things where you just... Resident Evil does that sometimes, where it's just like, all right, just have to buy into it, I guess. Oh, yeah, so Billy can't mix herbs. I forgot about that. Because uh, he's stupid. Give Billy the dumb thing. Or someone threw it up there. They banged their toe on it and threw it across the room in a fit of rage. <laughs> nice. Now, how are you going to party if you can't mix herbs? I know, right? <laughs> Um, so you're saying someone was down there, they couldn't move the steel crate, they kicked it and in a fit of rage, and was like, ah, my toe! And got so mad that they then, that they lost control of their anger to the point where they hurt themselves more, and they said, fuck this wheel, and they threw it up there. And then it got up there and they're like, shit, well how am I supposed to get that now? <laughs> I love that backstory. And it seems so perfectly human that I kind of wish they put a... There's a cutscene in this game that shows that happen. Like where someone looks and goes, how the hell did that get over there? And then like, oh, I want to write I want to write that as a fan fiction story now uh, with with you, Grifter. Uh, <laughs> called like, how'd the wheel get up there? And just, <laughs> just have some like employee just get pissed off. There you go, he says. Yeah, no, that's a great backstory. Oh, whoa! I forgot about this one. Am I? Okay, good. I'm still on fine. I was like, am I in caution? I'll be so pissed. I always forget about that one. Oh, I got them both. Oh, whoa, there's three. Jeez. Um, I think we have to go this way. I sometimes pass this ladder too. So that guy has a note regarding something. Yeah, so there apparently there was an investigation. So there's a I don't know if it was internal investigation, I can't remember. I'm sure I could just read the file, but we're 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 chugging along here. Um I'm fine with just moving. But yeah, there was like some kind of a investigation into the activities of you know this place and uh, why some of the things weren't met up to standard which I think is also a very human thing um, this place looks really eroded and, and crappy and unkempt and you would think uh, although not unreasonable to think this but you would think um, a, a company like Umbrella like I always liked that was one of the few things Paul Anderson I think did really well in the movies was he made everything look very pristine and clean looking and, uh, and I feel like ah that feels like an evil corporation would have that facade. But then here we are underneath it all. And just like as someone who's worked at Disney World, everything looks great up on the surface. And, uh, and underneath isn't at nearly as glamorous. That's for sure. So, um, so I can kind of see that as well. And I, I, I don't know, I like that, uh, 
But I like that there's still, if something, if things are that bad, there would still be some kind of investigation into it. Someone would look into, hey, why is, why, why do you guys have trouble turning the water on? Or why do you guys have trouble doing this? And that's not unreasonable to believe that something like that was going down. Um, that's fair, Grifter. Jomley says, cannon accepted. <laughs> no more eggnog for me ever, x Force. Oh no, x Force, are you okay? You just need to drink more of it. Quitters never win. <laughs> it's not quitting. It's knowing your limit. <laughs> What's up, X-Force? Happy holidays, dude. Merry Christmas. How are you? <laughs> what an entrance. What an entrance. Oof. I love those sounds. Please, Capcom, bring those sounds back in the next Resident Evil game. Make Revelations 3. Just do it, Capcom. You know we want it. You know everybody wants it. I'm just gonna leave that. I don't even know what's in there anymore. Um, let's take this. A photo stand. There's something written in the corner. Daddy, please come home. That's, uh, that's touching. And that's, that's the thing about Res Evil that I like, is that whoever writes, like, the little files and stuff, they add humanity to this these games, um, for sure. Alright, we've done enough grenade rounds. Let's do some flame rounds. The Purification Room. Former Disney employee can confirm. <laughs> Uh, Merry Christmas, Fran! This place is a little maze-like, uh, even to the point to where you're like, when you walk around it, it's like, oh, here's this room, and then here's this room. Each room just feels ridiculous. Like, uh, you're like, really, this was a place people worked? Um, this was a functioning place? Uh, apparently it was. We need the motherboard, so I think that's in the next room, hopefully, or it's down here, which we will go, oh, that's right, because we have to fight the tyrant again. Lactose intolerant plus eggnog equals really bad time. Oh my god, oh yeah, dude. No, that's not good. Terrible storytelling. Not even tense right now. I mean, I actually remember playing this game the first time on the GameCube, and where you know me, like I'll react to things. I'll be like, I'll freak out um, if I get scared. Uh, you know, I, I don't get like truly scared, but I I have reactions to games. I remember just being kind of bored with this game. Like when I was playing it, I was like, all right, I'm just going. I'm just I just keep going because. I'm a Resident Evil fan. Even with limited ammo, I was like, okay, it's a little tenser, sure, with limited ammo. Absolutely. When you have, when you don't have, you know, unlimited grenade launcher and stuff, there is like a, oh crap, I can die. But that was pretty much the only like fear I had was, oh, I'm going to have to die and replay this. Um, that was it. It wasn't like genuine, like creepiness or anything. I just remember just kind of being bored. So, Grifter, care to revise your previous statement, LOL? <laughs> Just drink the rum straight, so that that's much easier. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you're lactose intolerant, yeah, take out the egg uh, in your nog. Go full nog, dude. 
Hashtag full nog. 